Taiwan, the Heritage Exploration Initiative, one of India's leading history students collective, working towards promoting conversations around history, heritage, culture. In today's conversation, I have with me uh, one of the most uncompromising voices in Indian cinema, Shama Zaidi, who has contributed her rich repertoire of skills to many unforgettable films. She is known for her long career, long collaboration with um, Sham Benegal, writing the scripts for many of his films like Charandas Chor, Arohan, Mandi, Trikal, Suraj Ka Satwa Ghoda, Mammu. And she is also she has also worked as an art director in films like Manthan and Bhumika. Shama Zaidi was also credited for the costume designs in Swatiji Ray's landmark film Shatran Shi Khiladi. And her prowess in Urdu also allowed her to assist Javed Siddiqui in writing the dialogues for the film. She co-wrote the script of Muzaffar Ali's classic Umrao Jan, based on the novel Umrao Jan Ada. And other than Hindi and Urdu films, she has also collaborated with her husband M.S. Sathyu on his Kannada language films like Kaneshwara Rama and Bara that came out in 1980. So without further ado, I welcome our speaker today. Thank you so much, Shamaji, for accepting the invitation. And it is such an honor uh, hosting you on Karwan, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, let's let's get into the conversation directly, uh, Shamaji, if you allow me. Um, so if, if you can talk about your growing up years, because you grew up in a culturally and politically active environment. Your mother, Begum Kutsiya Zaidi Sahiba, was a known name in the literary world, and your father, Bashir Sahib, was a member of the first Lok Sabha. How did your growing up years shape you? And if you can go back in time and tell us about, uh, you know, in detail about your growing up years. Well, uh, my father was the uh, chief minister, which is a divan of a small state in UP called Rampur. And I was born there. And uh, I didn't know any English at that time, you know. So I was sent to an Urdu school with my younger brother. And it was quite nice. But my brother and I were getting very good marks. And my mother said, you're getting good marks because you're my uh, children. And uh, you need to go to a proper school where it's competitive. So somebody in, in Rampur who was the who was the nanny, the British nanny of the of the Rajkumars and Rajkumaris, her son had gone to a missionary school called Woodstock. And my mother didn't want to send me to a convent because she was very anti -ish. I think she had been sent to a convent herself. So we were sent to Woodstock, you know. So when I went there, the only English I knew was my name, Shama Zaidi, one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't know anything else, you know. So they made me repeat standard one because I had done that in Urdu medium. So I was actually older than all the other children in my class. So that is. Then, of course, I learned English and after a while. But my mother used to insist writing me letters in Urdu even when I was in boarding school in, in Woodstock. Yeah. So that's what, so I was, the, as far as the background of, the, of cinema, there was one cinema house in Rampur and my father didn't allow us to look at Hindi films. He thought they were very depraved. So we were only allowed to see cartoons like Bambi and things like that. Then in Woodstock, we had one or two screenings every, every month. And those were mostly of classics, especially, you know, Oliver Twist and uh, tale of two cities, things like that, which were connected. And we had very active theater activities in Woodstock. So that was my background. Yeah. And then your mother was also active in theater, if I'm not wrong. She was. That was much later. When, when I was in my uh, final year of school, she started a theater group uh, along with uh, Habib Tanmir and my future husband, Satyu. And uh, and then Satyu left, he went back because he was working with Chetananan. 
and then this group uh, started again when I I joined this group when I came back uh, when I joined college then I also used to go in the evenings and attend the rehearsals with my mother and uh, then Satyu was called for one production we did a Shakuntala and that's where we met and uh, I think we decided to get married but was much later and then after that my mother after college I went to the slave school of art to do art direction actually I'm trained for art direction but there was this thing called the National Film Institute in London and being student art students we were given some uh, ridiculously cheap film. so I used to spend all my time there you know and then when they had a festival say of Bulgarian films and they knew nobody would come they would say okay you people all come you can watch everything for free so of course we would go and so we got to see all these films for free and uh, you'd be surprised they had uh, given us we were studying art direction but they gave us a camera and a 16 millimeter footage and they said you can do what you like with it so there was one of the boys in our group he wanted to become a filmmaker so we gave him all our footage and he made some sort of small film black and white 16 millimeter in those days yeah <laughs> And then did you also experience theater in the UK uh, apart from films? I saw a lot of, uh, no, then after London, I went to uh, Germany and then I worked as a apprentice designer in an opera house in Frankfurt. And uh, that was for about one year. And then I went to Berlin where I worked as an observer in the Berliner Ensemble of the Bertolt Brecht Theater. But I was, uh, and then in Germany, I was broke and I went to meet the Indian ambassador. And he said, Can you work as a chaprasi for two weeks during the film festival, you'll get to see the films and you can deliver things to the post office. So because the chaprasi had gone on leave. So I was, I worked as a chaprasi for two weeks and I got to see the Berlin Film Festival also. <laughs> so, uh, so it was like that. And then uh, I had a very dear old friend from Miranda House where I went to college in Delhi and uh, Anjali Lemedan who later became famous and we hitchhiked back from Paris uh, to Istanbul all the way and then from Istanbul we were met by her relatives who drove us by road to Tehran and so that was quite an adventure. Yeah. And those who do not know Anjali uh, Ila Menon is considered to be one of the most known uh, artists in India today. And yes, her today. Work around partition, I think uh, her painting on partition is something that you all must look up on, on the internet. So um, you, you mentioned that you went to the Slate School of Art in London. And you briefly mentioned about Miranda House because I am an uh, alumni of Delhi University now. Oh, okay. I graduated from the Alsing College. Ah. I would love to know from you, uh, do you of the 50s? How was it? How was the experience? Well, the Miranda House was very active in theatre. So we did one, one or two plays every year. Uh, but I didn't do acting. I used to help backstage only. Because at that time I was working in my mother's group also. So I didn't have that much time. But they, we did plays like House of Bernard Alba, and you know, it was considered quite avant-garde in those days, yeah, to do such plays. But my mother was translating, and she translated some two or three Sanskrit plays. She translated Brecht, she translated Ibsen, you know, so a lot of uh, classics. And she rewrote uh, Anarkali. And then uh, she had this problem with Habib Saab because in between Habib Saab went off to Radha and he came back and uh, she wanted to have a regular you know, theater with full-time urban people and he wanted to experiment with folk theater and so on. So ultimately they separated because their visions were totally different. Yeah. So when I was in Delhi, Mandi House was a place that you know was known for theater be it street theater or, or you know, a stage drama. Yeah, but in the old days, there was only Sapro House. Mm. 
And so uh, um, I wasn't there then, but my mother told me that they had done Shakuntala. And I was in Germany then. And uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru told her, I am coming to see the play and I will have a special guest. So he came and he said, we'll pay for our tickets. So he came. And who was a special guest? It was the Prime Minister of Egypt, you know, and he sat next to him, you know, and uh, so, and he translated the play for him and so on. But you can't imagine that now. I mean, with so much security and so on, it's not possible. <laughs> You, but I think there's also a need for this cultural, uh, this awakening among the politicians because I think Nehru, in that sense, was different from his uh, other, you know. No, it's quite, it's quite common in in uh, European countries in Karnataka. Well, I remember when uh, Hegde was the chief minister. Oh, on on Karnataka day, he made everybody rehearse and uh, do one show of Yakshagana. The whole cabinet and Mr. Hegde acted in a Yakshagana play. I mean, that's not possible in Delhi. It's a, it's a, it's a North Indian problem, I think. <laughs> a problem that exists even today. Uh, but uh, you came back from, from Germany, from the Europe in 1961. Mm. Um, and um, after coming back, I think you, you met Satyu again. So, no, we got married then, that year only. Yeah. 61. Yeah, 61. And uh, what happened was, uh, no, 63 we got married, sorry. I came back in 61. And then we were doing plays. And we and again, another story about um, Jawaharlal Nehru. We had done Mudra Rakshas, which my mother's translation, which is a Sanskrit play. So I had gone to see him because when he was in jail, Mr. Pandit, that is Vijay Lakshmi Pandit's husband, translated this play from Sanskrit into English. So, so Mr. Nehru knew your play and he said, there's this particular speech by Chanakya towards the end. I hope you've kept that in the play. I was so shocked, you know, that after so many years, he remembered the play so well, you know. There was this all, you know, because... Uh this was also the time when you were trying to revive uh, Hindustani theatre. Yeah, yeah, but it, it was not possible because it, a lot of money was required and we didn't have that kind of pull that my mother had. And uh, that uh, Begum Patodi, who was Tiger Patodi's mother, yes. she was trying to help my mother, but she didn't have that knowledge of theatre and all. So she tried her best, but it didn't work out. Yeah. So we had to shut down the theatre. And then we moved to Bombay because he was working with, with Chetan Anand. Mm. And he was assisting him, I think. He was his assistant. Yeah, that play Hakikat was being done. Yeah, a film, Hakikat, yeah. Uh, your, your first film, Garam Hawa, I think, which was directed by Satyu Sahib himself, is the best and somewhat sadly one of the only portrayals of partition in our cinema, you know, the situation of Muslim who decided to live in India after partition. Uh, how did this idea come about? And if you can talk in detail about the making of the film and your involvement in the film. Well, well actually, when I went to uh, Bombay, I was I had nothing to do with film. And only Satya was assisting Mr. Anand. And I was uh, working in the IPTA as a theater person, which was not paid or anything. So I was doing this play uh, based on Bal on uh, Rajinder Singh Bedi's Ek Chadar Meili Si, in which Parikshit Sani played and Dina Gandhi, they played the main roles. So when we, I was working on dramatizing the novel with Bedi Saab, so I had many sessions with Bedi Saab. So Bedi Saab said, ke aisa hai ke ek film banni chahiye un musalmano ke baare mein jo nahi gaye Pakistan. So, I said, you don't So, I went and sat with her for a long time and she made this story and then she lost it. 
कहानी मैं दूसरी लिख देती हूँ तो शी रोट अनदर स्टोरी विच है नथिंग टू डू विद फर्स्ट स्टोरी देन आफ्टर सम टाइम शी सर अरे मैं अलमारी साफ कर रही थी और वो मिल गई मुझे so then she gave me the original thing so then i made a screen play but in that we show that he does go to pakistan you know and there he finds that it's not what he had imagined so i took it to my father and to nurul hasan who was a great family friend of ours who i think at that time he was education minister or something so they both said is ki siyasat theek hai siyasat theek nahi hai iski कहानी ठीक है मगर सियासत सब गड़बड़ है तो तो मैंने कहा अब इसकी सियासत ठीक करनी पड़ेगी ये दिखाना पड़ेगा कि वो यहाँ रह जाता है सो आई वेंट एंड मेट कैफी साहब अर्लियर आई वी हैड डन अ स्मॉल डॉक्यूमेंट्री ऑन गालिब इन विच वी गॉट कैफी साहब टू रीड द वॉइस ओवर ऑफ गालिब सो तो कैफी साहब सर अच्छा मैं इसकी सियासत ठीक कर देता हूँ रीड इट द होल थिंग He said, "No, you have said it in Lucknow. Lucknow, me, people are not like that. We keep it in Agra. Because the women who are dabbing are not like the women of Lucknow. They are not like the Western UP women. So we put it in Agra. And he thought, and then it, it became the shoe uh, factory, small small home home factory, because he had worked with." In New York, Kanpur, he was working with that union of sh- shoe manufacturers. And when we were making the film, Balraji, of course, got to know everybody. And after we left, they went on strike <laughs> because of, because he was chabifying them, you know. So, so the all the people who acted in the uh, film were originally from Ipta. Most of them were from Ipta. There were some theater people from Delhi. Like Rama Bans and so, and the so when we got there, the local people were didn't give us any uh, chance to do scenes. So we got uh, Jalal Aga to take another camera, fake one, and do a lots of hee haw type of acting in front of the camera, which had no film in it. And so everybody went to watch him do all those antics, and when we would see the Actual scenes somewhere else, you know. So that's how we managed, you know, to shoot the film. So yeah. So but then when the film was made, uh, it was uh, not given a certificate. So then we, yeah. but you had to go and meet Mrs. Gandhi and show her the film, and then she said, "No, there's nothing wrong with it," and so on. But then one Congress fellow said, "End me, you have seen a red agenda. Congress has put a red agenda." You know, so we said no, we can't do that because it's a whole thing. It doesn't make any sense. You know, so that was how. And then there was a lot of anti-writing and saying that the Pakistanis had uh, the organizer wrote an article written by Mr. Advani. Mr. Advani in his day was very fond of films and theater. You know, so he would come and see our shows for Ipta and other group theater groups. So he somehow wrote. Then afterwards, I said, "Apne ye kyun kaha?" He said, "Nahi, wo galti thi maine." I said, "The just government of India has given the money. The film festival, the corporation FFC was called, and NFDC they put the money in. So how can you say it's a Pakistani money?" So anyway, it was like that. Yeah, uh, because you mentioned FFC, FFC in this answer. So, Ganam House was financed by Film Finance Corporation, which was the predecessor of NFDC that we have today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that has that as an organization played a big role in promoting serious cinema in India at at a time. Mm. So, how do you see the role of FFC and NFDC and the government financing films? Because there was also a belief that good cinema makes good citizens. How do you see that? well because it was uh, such kind of uh, financing was being done in many other countries even big countries like australia canada germany france they were all supporting different uh, kind of non commercial film mainly to compete with them hollywood they wanted to promote their own cinema because hollywood was totally dominating at that period in time 
And here it was because uh, uh, the local uh, cinemas were given more importance, you know, Malayalam, Bengali. I think they benefited more from the parallel cinema. And also because Mr. Ray also supported this kind of activity. And then don't forget, uh, Indira Gandhi was, uh, was a film buff and she was the president of the film society movement at one time. Yeah. Uh, you, you said that most of the actors in Garam Hawa were part of the uh, movement. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, in today's India, there's no culture of cultural discourse that is absent in our society. So what is your opinion and do you think collectives like IPTA could be reorganized today and what they're, they're, they're they're still, I, I don't think I don't agree with you mm -hmm. when you say that there is no discourse. There is discourse, but it's of a different level, you know. And there are a lot of uh, people who are trying to do things. In this cinema, it's a bit of a problem because uh, it doesn't have a base, you know. Uh, out of say 300 films or 350 films, about 10 or 15 will have a Hindi background in the in the sense that the characters shown would normally be speaking Hindi. You see, the films that are made generally are about people who would not normally speak Hindi. They would speak some other language or they would speak, you know, they would speak English. Nowadays, most of the films made in uh, Bollywood are about the upper middle class who doesn't speak Hindi. That's the problem. You know, so I think probably Kanpur could become a center of filmmaking, I feel, but I don't know, maybe not. In the last few years, we have seen some films that, you know, set up in smaller towns like Lucknow, Kanpur. Yeah, I, I feel Lucknow is too close to the political scene, you know, so I think places like Kanpur or, or Banaras could be more, more better suited for making films. But I don't think that the, for the Hindi speaking states, films is only a way of, uh, of getting uh, entertainment tax, you know, or for, uh, uh, on the state level. And nowadays they want to make it a propaganda kind of cinema, you know, to propagate a particular ideology. So, but they're not saying that you are a writer, you have a film on it, so we will do it. There is nothing else. Which is, in, in other languages, it's not like that. I mean, I, this latest big film that Mani Ratnam is making about Raja Raja Chola, it's a, based on a very famous novel, you know, but we don't do that in, in Hindi. Mein nahi karte hai. Yes, and I'll come to that part on history cinema later in this conversation because I think that's very exciting and very uh, uh, saddening maybe uh, when we see the Hindi cinema scene on that. But uh, coming back to your films, you, the first collaboration that you did with uh, Shyam Benigal was Charan Das Chor. That's right. Uh, and it was a film that featured uh, folk artists, folk actors who were not really trained in the they, they were Habib Tanvir's theatre group. Yeah. Habib, Habib Sahab had uh, wanted to do a play, you know, and he had gone on a workshop of Vijay Dandita in Rajasthan and he found this story. So we made a film and afterwards he made a play from the same and he used the same songs because he wrote the songs for the film also. And he did play a small role in the film. But this film was banned in the emergency. A children's film, can you believe it? But it was banned. Because there was a queen in it and she was a very capricious queen, so the film was banned. Yeah. And then you, uh, in one of your interviews, you mentioned how difficult it was to work with folk actors because, you know, in one shot yeah. they used to give. Oh, yeah. That's what Govin said. I mean, yeah. Sham Saab had no problem because folk actors improvise, but they knew, they instinctively knew about connect, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, this, uh, I did this, I had a hand here, I had this hand here. So continuity ka unko sab pata tha. But bolte kya hai, wo jo jo, they would change in each, 
mistake, which Govind would get very annoyed, you know, with that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll move now to a show and then we'll come back to the cinema, you know, we'll, we'll keep shifting mediums. Uh, so Bharat Ek Khoj, the most important show, I think, of uh, of our time. And when uh, we history students, we, we chat and we talk in very popular culture, mein how history is shown, we always give this example. If you want to understand the history of India uh, easily, you just watch the Bharat Ekho series on YouTube because all the episodes are available free on YouTube. It was a monumental project and you were involved in the, in the research and uh, scripts for that show. And when we were interviewing Mr. Benigal for Karwan Archives, he mentioned how the art directors had to study the history of the architecture and 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 design and they could very well join as teachers and professors after the show mm. so overall if we see it was a big massive project can you talk in detail about the show your experience uh, the learning and challenges that you had well the biggest challenge was what to put in and what not to put in you know so we had to leave out a lot of things they wanted to put in, like, you know, uh, Greater India, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, that part we had to leave out. And we had to leave out a uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, Bengal didn't get that much importance, for instance. And uh, then we wanted to put in a lot of South Indian things, which was not in the original. We somehow two-sorted, it, you know. I mean, Raja Raja Chola and the, you know, the, uh, the different empires and so on. We had to put that in and then we, we, then the other thing we did was we put bits of classical literature as part of the series, you know. So we had, you know, Chilapadi Karam, which is a Tamil classic and we had Chakundala and Chikatek and we had other uh, writings from other sources just to and uh, then uh, of course we, we had that uh, Prithvira Chauhan also as as an episode and so on you know and then we had many many writers but first the, the longest time was taken in deciding the 52 actually there are 53 episodes and then we said we can't show anything beyond the beginnings of the movement with Gandhi we can't show Nehru as Nehru taking part in the freedom movement. We didn't show that part. We only ended with the beginning of, and that too was based on a novel called by Raja Rao called Kantipura. You know, so that was the. And there were many historians also who were part of the project. As oh well. yes, many many historians. So how is that, you know, collaborating with the historians because they no, kind we, of are very serious at times. No, we would send them the scripts and then they would say, yeah, 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 theek nahi hai, isko nikal do, ye karo, wo karo. That is how. But uh, Romila Thapar refused, uh, but everybody else agreed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you remember any of the historians who are part of the project, you can name some of them. Well, we had consulted Irfan Habib at one point and uh, there was a lady called Champaka Lakshmi she was our oh, South Champaka Indian. Lakshmi yeah, so. she was a classical musician also herself. and uh, then we had some people from uh, Bombay University also I don't remember all the names now yeah um, and I think um, that because of such um, hard work that was put in by by the crew by by all of you i think that made the show what it is today the the status that it holds today in the annals of indian television because in the past when i was growing up you know 10 years ago five years ago uh, the the kind of history shows that are being made are much like the sars Bahu shows that you see uh, you know the daily soap Kind of shows that you see. So do you see any TV shows these days, uh, especially on history? Uh, no, I don't watch television. I I have I have given up my cable connection. <laughs> so, 
that's a that's that's a great saving of uh, sanity maybe. <laughs> uh, so now coming back to cinema, as I said, we play with the with mediums. Shatranj ke Khiladi, uh, another big project that you were part of. Uh, this was the first film, first Hindi film of uh, the great master Satyajit Ray, and uh, you were given the responsibility of designing the costumes and also creatively translating the script, as we mentioned in the introduction. Uh, Javed Siddiqui Sahab ke saath you were you know, translating the script. Uh, so recently there was also an exhibition, I think, in Delhi uh, about the costumes of Shatranj ke Khiladi. It was a beautiful uh, exhibition. I couldn't be there, but my friends. Uh, sent me a lot of pictures. Um, so those costumes hold this iconic status uh, when we see. How did uh, Ray approach you for the project and then what was the process of researching and designing costumes for a film set up in the uh, say 19th century hour? Well, he had to pass every single piece of fabric. So I made a, I made a chart for him. This character is going to have this piece of cloth, this piece of cloth. Then in, I remember one costume which was worn by, uh, I think, uh, Saeed uh, Jafri. It was a dark piece and it had a one white small edging. He made me change the edging. He said there's too much contrast. And he was that particular about everything. And he was very upset because in the last where the British army marches in, they couldn't get the, uh, the costume properly because they were made of very cheap material. Because the producer didn't want to spend just on that one shot. You know? So that was a bit of a problem. Then the, another very funny uh, incident we had, that Mari Seaton, who was a great uh, Ray Buck, and she was, in, the, in those days she was considered some kind of writer on cinema. But now it's a, she's considered more of a joke, you know. But anyway, but uh, she was supposed to bring their British costumes. And when they came, and it was specifically mentioned that the film is shot in winter. But they decided that in India, everything, there's no season. They sent all summer costumes with solar topis and all that. So we had to get uh, Richard Attenborough suits made in Calcutta. We had to get uh, Tom Walters costume altered again for, from a summer costume to a winter costume. And we, and then they sent us one pirate's costume. We don't know what the pirate's costume is for, you know. So that was quite, quite an adventure, you know. And I think, um, you know, um, there was also this scene that you mentioned in one of your interviews where you had to make the costume, entire costume for uh, Wajid Ali Shah's mother. Yeah, yeah, because she, she couldn't act without the full costume. She said, no, I can't act with only the top. But Mr. Ray said, only close-up is coming. He said, no, no, I want full costume. So we had to get, make the full costume for her. And even Tom Walter's dummy sideburns were used in, I think, makeup to match up his uh, hair color, if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. And uh, about this film only, uh, how was this writing, translating script experience like? Well, I had um, also helped a little bit in the research in the beginning. And he said, uh, you know, so I got him some letters that Wajid Ali Shah wrote to his wife. He said, these are nice, but they don't work for me. And then I said, well, there's a book about his, uh, his sexual escapades. He said, don't give me that book. Because I have just got to like this man, and if you give me all this stuff, then I will start to dislike him. I don't want to read any of that stuff. So I said, okay, I won't give you that stuff to read. So that's what he said. In, in film circles, there's also a discussion. Um, I, I was reading a discussion, I think it's in the book, um, Rochana Majumdar's book on uh, art cinema, which came out last year by Columbia University Press, where she talks about historicity in uh, Ghatak's films, but he, she also mentions, and I was also reading that, you know, certain kind of historicity was also present in Ray's imagination, cinematic imaginations. So when you were working with, with Ray on Shatranj Ki Khiladi, how did you see this historicity, aspect of historicity in his work? I, I don't know what that means. What does historicity mean? 
his his understanding of history may be shown in the in in the way he used to make cinema. I I don't see Ritik Ghatak historicity at all. I think he's a very sentimental filmmaker. By the way, he was part of IPTA and he directed one of um, which still recently was being performed, a Prem Chand story, which uh, Minal Sen then made into a film. You know. So he was a pretty good theater director, but I don't think I think too much has been made of Ritik Ghatak, you know. And the main reason is to run down Ray. I mean, quite frankly, I mean he had his place and he had a certain uh, way of looking at things. But uh, I I think he was a complete badrulok, you know. The beautiful yeah. sense of music and you know, so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you think that maybe um, we underrate uh, Ghatak in 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 this race to overrate Ray in some senses? Maybe. No, I think they both have their place. You know, because that uh, immediacy of of the the separation of Bengal. I mean, nobody has got that better than Ghatak. All his all his films are about nostalgia for for Bangladesh. You know. Uh, moving ahead, how would you describe your journey through building character arches and uh, you know plots and tap into this grandiosity while portraying the courtesan culture infused with what is now described as part of the Islamicate culture? Uh, yeah, I, I have a huge problem, and with that, what's her name? That lady, that uh, Ira Bhaskar. Yeah. And at, at a seminar, I made her cry because I thought Islamicate was stupid. I said, you think that Garmawa? And Mere Mehboob are the same sort of film. You think Chaturanj Ke Khiladi and Mere Mehboob is the same sort of film, or or a Mughal e Azam and Chaturanj Ke Khiladi just because it has a Muslim background is Islamic it? You don't know the meaning of Islamic it. it Islamic it is what is make, featuring aspects of Islamic culture which is in something which is not Islamic, like the film Yahudi. I find that in an Islamic hit film, you know, uh, Parsi theater is Islamic hit, even though the themes might be something else, you know. But you can't call a film Islamic hit just because the characters are Muslims. It's just stupid uh, this thing, and it's a very American way of looking at things, you know. So I said, well, you know, since all, most of the characters in in Hindi films are Punjabis, so we have the Khatri at cinema because everybody is a Khatri. You know, and so Madan Gopal Singh and I made a whole list of Khatriyat films. You know, so we had a great time doing that. Because everybody in a films with made in the 60s and 70s, in the wedding, in the all Punjabi wedding with the pink turbans and going balle balle and all that. You know, so and that, there are more Khatriyat films than Islamicate films, by the way, in Hindi cinema. Of course, now it's changed. Now the characters are not. <coughs> Punjabis anymore. They're upwardly mobile urban types. No, so when you were writing Rao Jan, I won't use that term now, Islamic culture, because the you know you you gave very logical reason and it's also historical uh, a historical mistake to call that Islamic culture in some senses. But how was this uh, Experience like for Umrajan, especially of building these character arcs and plot, and we we didn't know. have to do much. It's a novel, no? It's a classic. Hmm. Well, the characters are already there. We had to only up enhance the characters and so on. So, uh, well, I mean, Javed reminded me the other day that there was one scene in which uh, Farooq Sheikh is watching her dance. So afterwards, I. I told Javed that this is what is going on here. And there is no reaction to it. That the two of them don't get their eyes, they don't get anything done. What is this rubbish scene? So we wrote another scene for the two of them where they talk about poetry and all that, you know. And they get close to each other. So we had to invent that scene because he acted so badly in one particular scene, you know. So that was one thing. But, uh, yeah, that novel can be remade twenty times, you know. But unfortunately, the second time it was made was made so badly, and there was no new insight. When you when you remake 
a classic. You have to give another insight into the film. Yeah, my, my next part of the question was about the remake of Umrah Jan that happened in, in this. Actually, I haven't seen it because I said I don't like that filmmaker, so I am gonna, I'm not going to see the film. You know, I don't like his other films, they're so bad. So, just because you're making a classic doesn't mean your film is going to be a classic. That's a mistake. Now, somebody is making a film on Shakuntala, which makes me cringe. Yeah, no. There is a news of uh, a film on Shakuntala being yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I saw the stills and it was so horrible that I just, you know, that I just look away when I. <laughs> uh, you were also the art director of Manthan and Bhumika, which were both based on real life, real life people, personalities. Uh, but the, the world is different. Um, and how do you see, how do you look after the accuracy and authenticity of these two worlds as an art director, world of in the real and the real world? Well, the, the real in that film was mostly in black and white. And that was because Mr. Benegal didn't have enough footage. So then he told me okay, that uh, we have, we will shoot the older portions and the cinema portion in black and white. And we will shoot uh, another portion with, with Nasiruddin Shah. We will shoot that in Orvo. And the latest with the last bit, we will shoot in Technicolor because we have only so much footage. It was rationed in those days. But then I had to redesign the costumes because designing for black and white and color is not the same. No? So he had an old colleague of his who was um, Mr. Kamat, who had worked in black and white cinema. So I asked him to tell me, you know, that you know, if you have pink and yellow together in black and white, it looks the same. It's a shade. So he said you have to use more texture. You have to use different kind of color. So then. When they transform a black and white film into color, it looks awful because it was not designed for color, you know. That's what happened. Yeah, and what about Bhumika? I... That's, I'm talking to you about Bhumika only. Mm. Bhumika was shot in this kind of okay. film. And then, and then Manthan, if you can talk about Manthan. Well, Manthan, what happened was that in Manthan, it was not much to do because it was all actual location and we had a real village and we just copied whatever was being shown in the village because the story is not that far back. It was 10 years or 20 years earlier than, and villages don't change that much. But what happened was that, uh, <clears throat> uh, that Tendulka wrote the script and Kefi Saab wrote the dialogues. But when we got onto the location, some people from the Amul had come as to advise us on technical aspects. Uh, they said that this film is all wrong. The story is not correct. Because Mr. Korean told Sham, you do what you like, I don't want to know. But then these people were ground level workers and they said the story is all wrong. So we had to rework the script and redo the dialogues and Girish Karnad was doing a role. He also helped. So the, what Tendulka wrote and what Kefisa wrote is absolutely totally different from what I turned up finally, you know. So I, I, that, 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 of course, I didn't get credit for that, but that's what I had to do also. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, being in the industry for many decades now and having written a diverse genre of films that you have uh, and also across various departments, costume designing, art direction, writing, uh, scripting. What has been your experience with regard to creative freedom and artistic expression uh, in our cinema? Because you mentioned how Ray was very particular about what he wanted to see in his films. How was your experience of working with these people? Well, uh, there's a very funny story you probably know about it. That when Because we got Richard Attenborough to do a role and his he, he took, I think, three scenes or four scenes. It was over in three days. So Mr. Ray decided to add one more scene, which he shot. So I told him that this scene that you have shot, upsets the balance between Vajid Ali Shah and Richard Attenborough's character. So I don't think it's correct. 
and he gave me a long explanation and all about why he had to put in the scene. But I knew he just wanted to use Richard Attenborough because he was being paid this kind of money and so on. So then one day when we were in Delhi for the film festival, he said, I want to show you something. So he said, you come to the film, uh, what is it, uh, film division editing room. So I went there. So he said, see, this is the film. <laughs> Cut out that scene. <laughs> he put it in my hand. He said, you're right. <laughs> so, I mean, that also happens. And then uh, now that we are on this artistic expression and freedom, creative freedom aspect, as a screenwriter, how comfortable are you with this improvisation done by the actors and the filmmakers while shooting? And how much is your involvement after giving the script to the subject? Oh, Mr. Benegal is forever improvising. So we have to be there on the set because you have to change the dialogues and you might have to write a new scene. So there is no film of this except one. Uh, which was Mandi, which was because I had a fight with Satyadev Dubey and I told Sham, you better take him because if you take me, you spend the whole time, you know, separating us. Because Dubey had this habit of fighting with me every once in a while. Then after some two weeks, he would come home and say, I'm very hungry and he would come and sleep in my house, you know. But he was like that, you know, he was a very erratic kind of person. <laughs> so I said, I Attention ho jayega, aap inko le jau. Oh, yeah. But did that irritate you also, uh, these so many improvisations by Shyam Babu? No, I do, because ultimately the director who makes the film, not the scriptwriter, you know. Whereas exactly at in <clears throat> Hollywood, I have done three or four scripts which never got made, you know. And once for and they are very distinct about it, you know. So I did one script for Muzaffar on Rumi, which I think I wrote about 10 times. And then they got one script doctor. They have script doctors in Hollywood, you know, who probably got more money than I did. And she said, this scene does not connect with scene number 54, because here you say this, and in scene 54, you're saying something else. So please redo it. This scene is redundant. Please add another scene here, like that. She read it, the whole script. Then the final version, they said, no, we must get a Hollywood script writer. So we got a Hollywood script writer. And his idea of Sufism was that all that Rumi did was invent that dance of turning around, you know. That was his interpretation of Sufism. So it was quite <laughs> funny, but that's what happened. But yeah, <laughs> I think you could be a better, you know, script doctor that would that would fetch you more uh, finance than writing scripts in, in the cinema. Have you ever thought of it? Well, if, well, I, if they ask me, I'd be quite happy to do it, but nobody has so far. I think people are very, uh, very possessive of their work, you know, and they don't want uh, it to be corrected. And I, I think in uh, it's necessary to have script doctors, not me, but other people who know about cinema. Uh, and uh, no, like you have editor, you have editors for novels. Yes. You know, in pub publishing houses, they tell the author either ye kar do, ye kar do. They 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 give very creative uh, suggestions. It seems that Jacqueline Kennedy was, was supposed to be a very good editor for such stuff. Mm. But a point that you raised just now um, in this statement was that people are not ready to accept their, uh, you, you know, mistakes in, in not not just in film, but even in real life, people don't like to be pointed out that, you know, you, you can do this better. They don't want to be uh, instructed in some senses. Do you think that limits a filmmaker when you know he's not ready to accept uh, suggestions from the crew members? Has that ever happened to you that you suggested something and the filmmaker said That's you know? A, a lot of them are like that, you know, or they will turn around and then two days later tell you what you told them as if they had thought of it, you know. So that, that is also there. <laughs> 
that's a clever way actually to 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 do it their way that they can hum dil ko mana lete hain galib khayal acha hai ki ye hamara hi khayal tha so now we mentioned ray we mentioned shyam benegal and both their ways of working is very different one is very particular about perfection that i want this to be exactly like what i have envisioned the other one likes to improvise as you mentioned so when you were working with both these people how was it how was it different for you as a screenwriter as a, working with both these people you see we had to be on the set because he didn't know the language so both javed and i were there throughout on the set I think he was not used to that, but he was quite keen uh, for us to do another film with him, and he was wanted to do Darash Chiko. That was a favorite project of his, but it it didn't happen because he got his heart problem, and he was told he could not do anything big. He had to only work on small projects, which were studio based mostly. So all his later films were on a smaller thing. He would have made more Hindi films if his health had permitted. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what's your writing process like? How do you approach a film while writing the screenplay or script? Because you said there's this director's vision also that is on, you know, that is played out when you are writing. So, how is that experience? How do you write? How do you approach films? I I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I do is I make a one-liner, and then I expand that, you know. But in in a film like Suraj Ka Saath Maang Bada, I wrote the whole thing in two weeks, you know. But in in a film like we did for Mr. Benegal on Subhash Chandra Bose, we did seventeen different versions, although all the material was there, but we had to. So even the one we're doing now on Mujib. Which is now almost complete. That also we had to do so many versions of that film. Yeah. So, do you experiment with the structure of right of a screenplay by writing film? Because you mentioned Sadhguru's Ka Saathwang Gora, and there was a film where you ex ex experimented uh, with the structure of screenplay quite a bit. Well, there were certain scenes which are, I just saw it recently because somebody had done a program on it, which is also another funny thing. You know, they speak Macay. They phoned me and they said we're showing Suraj Ka Saath Maang Bada. So I said, oh, that's a very nice. I like that film. It's one of my favorite. What I have done. So then, I suddenly discovered that that film is being shown for eighth standard people. So after the film, there was stunned silence because it's an adult subject, you know, and there were no questions. So then I rang, I wrote to them and I said, "What is this nonsense? This is an adult film. The various aspects of this man's love life, and you have shown it to thirteen-year-olds, and they won't understand. The film is not meant for them." And then the principal told me, "You know, they would say, 'Kaha ke hum ek film dikha rahe hain, aap apne bachcho ko tayar kariye.'" So my, I, he said, "I got this standard seven. They were wanting to see. They didn't tell me what the film is about." So I said you're very badly organized. You're such a well-known organization. You shouldn't do this kind of thing, you know. But, oh, my wife was very sick, or something like that uh, happened. You know. You know what happened? <laughs> But yeah, they they forgot to show uh, Charan Das Chor instead of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they could have. Instead. Uh, They really enjoyed that much. So you're not going to get two hours work. You've only hardly done forty-five minutes, and you want to go on blabbering for another hour. What are you going to do for another hour? And how did you structure the the, the film Suraj Ka Saath Maang Bada? That's what I said. Uh, because we had there were the three stories that he told of this. Three involvements. One when he was younger than the girl, and then one when <clears throat> there was a relationship with another girl who got married to somebody else. And the third was with that 
gypsy girl, so, which was at a later period. So there are three different ages of this person, but the same actor is doing it because he's telling his, his own story. So what I did was that I would repeat scenes from one section to the other, which would have a different meaning in the other meaning, you know. So that was a sort of uh, the way it was done. With, with that Rubik's Cube kind of thing, you know, I thought it was very popular in those days. And then I, I, I used that whole um, motif of Devdas, which was not so important in the novel, but I enhanced it, you know, because everybody has their own idea of Devdas, you know. So once I, I met a, a fellow who works in a bank here, you know, just Darwaze pe khade hote hain. So I said, what are you doing? Read a magazine, read a good book. He said, Madam, you give me Devdas. So I gave him Devdas to read, which he liked very much. So, I mean, it, it has that kind of resonance, you know. Before asking my next question, because you just mentioned about reading and the only thing common is, which is visible um, between us is the library, the, the bookshelf that is behind our, ourselves. So how do you see this habit of reading and how important is the habit of reading? Because now my generation, uh, especially, they don't like reading books. Uh, they want to watch it on Netflix. They want to, you know, maybe listen to an audio book. How do you see this experience of reading books? Well, uh, reading books itself is a very recent phenomenon. You know? It came after things got printed. Earlier, you were only listening to the book. So that's how you were getting, I mean, Tastan Goi and all that was how you listen to the story. Or you're watching a play. Or a Kathakar or, you know. And that people learned about uh, Ramayana Mahabharata only from listening to it. There's nothing new. Only you have the added advantage of seeing a picture also along with it. But painting So that is also one method. Actually, I wanted to do a play like that, but I haven't got around to doing that yet. <laughs> that would be interesting to see actually. Uh, maybe the artist is behind the the parda, and then there's light coming from behind, and they are acting. No, no, they stand in front. Mm -hmm. The whole form, they stand in front. Yeah. Or and in 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 Iran, the same form it's called uh, parda, parda dari, and uh, they have a parda about the events of Karbala, you know, and different scenes are are painted all over, and they have a light lamp and the section they are talking about they hold the lamp in front of that and they talk about it and they go to the next section and it's part of it is musical so it's a it's a developed form it's a very important form yeah well but we haven't ad adapted it in indian uh, especially in hindi uh, situation i think as of yet uh, somebody might have but i don't know about it i'm sure it's somebody must have done it you know Maybe in Jaipur or something like that, because it's a Rajasthan poem. And in Gujarat also, it's very popular poem. So, uh, I don't know if this question uh, mean anything or is it logical to ask, but do you think uh, in Hindi cinema, we are talking about Hindi cinema, I won't call it the Indian cinema, because that might, uh, you know, discourage other regional cinemas that exist of equal importance. Uh, but in Hindi cinema, we lack this uh, vastness or this uh, importance of various mediums. We don't experiment with mediums in Hindi cinema that much now. You see, what happened was that in the beginning, when the RC theater was there, a lot of people came from the Hindi speaking regions and they added to the Gujaratis and Maharashtrians in Bombay. And because the center for Parsi theater was Bombay, that is why Hindi cinema is in Bombay 
just because of Parsi theater, you know. And uh, <clears throat> then afterwards, the progressive writers movement, a lot of writers came, a lot of, but if you see the actors, especially actresses, there are very few whose mother tongue is in the Urdu, you know. And this experiment we had, I mean, this uh, experience we had in Bangladesh when we made this film on Mujib, because we used only Bangladeshi actors, and the way they have a command on the language, we don't have that command. Most of the actresses, especially if they're sons and grandsons and daughters of already existing actors, in, they don't speak Hindi properly, because their main language is English, you know. In fact, you must have seen that, um, what's his name, that Nawazuddin, when he was asked, what aapko Hollywood mein kya, Hollywood mein aapko kya shikayat hai? He said, ek to mujhe naam se shikayat hai. Dousre ye ke mujhe, mujhe script jo hai Dev Nagari mein nahi milti. Or tisri ye ke director mujhe angrezi mein baat karta hai. So ye Hindi cinema ki teen kamzoriya. So ye kamzoriya hai Hindi cinema ki. Uh, in an interview, a writer said that if the character is and the character is saying the character is not So, you know, do you feel most contemporary writers don't have this understanding of diction and dialect, especially when, you know, we had, uh, in your time, mo most of the dialogues had Urdu in it. Uh, no, but, but the, the, the language of the cinema will be what people speak. People don't speak Urdu now. People speak English. They say, we are English. Mein baat kar rahe. You know. Yeah. And how do you see this language? <laughs> because it's not pure. Well, that's, why, that's why I feel. Because, you know, you don't have this problem in Tamil or Telugu or Malayalam. Unless that milieu is like that. A certain milieu, people talk English. But not everybody does. But unless you make films in Hindi speaking areas, you will not get over this problem. You know, that the language which is spoken by people. In America, they have two types of films. No? They have films which are very American and then they have films for the international market. But when they make films with American characters, they have dialogue coaches. In our Bangla film, we had a dialogue coach. And she would say, in this, you're speaking this dialect not in the language of which is spoken in Mujib's village. Change your dialogue. And she would make them re, re say, or we don't have that kind of thing. So you will have the father with a uh, Punjabi accent and the mother with a Gujarati accent. And the children will speak convent Hindi, you know. So it's not believable. Unless they belong, if they film about that class, then it's okay. And then I think it is Suraj Ka Saathwa Ghoda where you have Amrish Puri, who is a, is, a, is a Punjabi, and you know, they had this Bhojpuri dialect or, or you know, this Purviya dialect. So how, how was that experience, if you could remember that film? Well, Mamrish Puri is a very hard-working actor, you know, and he never got that range. I've seen him in the theatre. He was a fantastic actor in the theatre, but he never got that kind of opportunity in cinema, you know, that he could have done that kind of very complex role. Yeah. Uh I think if if I'm not wrong, I uh, you could correct me. But you were also somewhat associated with the film society movement that was happening in the 60s, 70s, uh, the, the radical film society movement. And yeah, there was. Well, I used to go and watch that film. Then Uma De Kunia used to run this society in Bombay, and Sati and I would go. And then in Bomb in, in Delhi, we had started our own little film society, in which we borrowed one projector from somewhere and we used to get 16 millimeter films from various embassies and show those, you know. So that was a very small. So what was, what was the role of that movement? How it defined cinema? Well, you get, you that was the only way you could see films in those days, you know. Now you can just see any film you want, but it was not so then. <coughs> 
So, uh, and and what had motivated you to mediate it, uh, the film society movement in Delhi? And no, it was it was hardly mediating. It was just very small. The actual big big people in the film society movement in Delhi were much more active than we were. You know, we were just on the side somewhere. Uh, mm. And because now we don't have that movement, uh, it's it's not active now. Uh, so how do you perceive the Hindi cinema industry now in terms of the content it produces with the absence of a new movement? Well, they they were never part of the film movement to begin with. The normal film industry, you know, they were doing Parsi theater uh, until the 60s, they were doing Parsi theater. And now they're doing bad Hollywood films. You know, you would get some Korean film, some Hollywood film, some South film, and you remake it. That is what mainly what they're doing. There's no, not much original. I don't know why. I still think that if if it moves northwards, I think you'll get better content. I think Bombay is a dead end, quite frankly. But that's my view. It might be wrong. You know. Yeah, so when we are decolonizing or decentralizing Bombay, and then, then you do you think uh, the move, the this industry would move to cities like, as you mentioned, Kanpur or you know the tier two, tier three cities, and that might make a difference because the kind of stories that would come up, uh, the the stories that would be told would be different from. Well, the, I, I I thought with the you know with the equipment being so simple and you don't need that many people to make a film. So I thought that films would be made in places like that also, but it's not happening. So, you know, so if, um, I think people like you should make films about history and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> that's that's a good enough motivation to uh, fill the FTI forms that are out now. Uh, oh, you see, you see, the film the FTI produces a particular type of filmmaker, you know, and half the people who pass out hardly make films. I'm sorry, but it is the the technicians who pass out from the film institute who get who do a lot of work, but the people who, unless you're from Bengal or Kerala or Karnataka, you know, and you get to, but in Hindi film, there are very few people who get to make films. They will make one or two films and then it dries up. In fact, there's a very famous producer in Iran. And he said that, you know, we don't mind financing the first or second film of a young director, but after that, their demands grow and then we can't afford them anymore. That what happens, you know, you become more ambitious. You don't keep yourself down to that kind of thing. So it's uh, very difficult. No, but I was quite surprised actually when you're talking about history. I had gone to the museum in Lucknow to look at the costumes. They have a very good costume collection, by the way. And I found that the people there were so knowledgeable about films, you know, working the people working in the museum. I thought that was very nice, you know. So there are, and I find people who are in the sciences are also very uh, knowledgeable about Indian classical music. I don't know why it happens like that. You know, so maybe you should make more history people interested in cinema so that some of them might become filmmakers. At least they could make the good documentaries. We don't have good documentaries also, you know. You know, there is not a single proper documentary on the Indian freedom movement. Is there, you tell me if there is one. No. On every other subject in Europe you can find, you know. On, on Nazi Germany you will find hundreds of films being made. And then people want to make feature films. But feature films then yeah, half the truth gets messed up because you have to have motivation, character, movement, you have to have one scene after the other, and then it's not 100% historical. Whereas in a documentary, you can do that. 
and now that uh, you know there is this this trend of making history feature films these days uh, these very famous commercial actors uh, are making films like say prithviraj chauhan or or but, that, but that's not history yeah you know that is like the old films i mean how is the jhansi ki rani ki to film ban chuki hai pehle and the war scenes in that were better than in this one yeah yeah and but you know this uh, this recent film on uh, samrat uh, uh, you know uh, prithviraj chauhan they, men, they they claimed that this is based on authentic historical uh, mm-hmm. you know anybody with half an eye can see that the costumes are all wrong the architecture is all wrong you know the colors are all wrong so i don't know what history they are talking about either that person doesn't have any eye ke aankhi nahi hai unki to kya dekh rahe ho you know then you get a punjabi actor to play rajasthani i mean it's a bit much double the age of the character because yeah, double the age of the character also you know he's about 50 55 and prithviraj chauhan was about 25 30 mm. when he he passed he died no But, because you know when you make a film with an agenda that's what happens unfortunately i mean prithviraj raso is very because we had covered it in bharat ek hole you know and uh, so so this is very i saw it recently it was so touching you know when he dies when he kills him and then they both commit suicide when on the end he badal diya so how could it be authentic But actually in history it didn't happen like that no prithvi rajan they uh, uh, was killed and then he uh, was not killed he was sent back and he was ruling for a while So it didn't happen like that. So, but you fictionalize the past, you glorify it, you know. So, what do you think are the problems with this history genre in Hindi cinema? If you could list down some of the problems that you see, you see, every film is a londa londi film. That's the problem. You make a film on a shock. You make it about his love life. You make a film on. on uh you know you make uh, mughalay azam it is about his love life so it's like that so it it's just a love story disguised as a historical you know that's the problem and and how do you see uh because you mentioned the costumes are very bad and the color schemes they used or whatever they are using doesn't match the in even the slightest uh, imagination of those time uh, and so how do you see a film like uh, from, from from producer director like sanjay leela bansali is known for majestic sets like you know big sets but, but he doesn't claim to be historically correct he got his own vision you know he 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 is from the very operatic you know and and when you were making bharat ek khoj because we were talking of chauhan and others you when you were making bharat ek khoj there was also shows like charnakya uh, which some of the historians also objected uh, when it was you know was telecasted how was did you watch charnakya when it came out on doordarshan was was your reaction and on you other mean, you mean the la- that uh, this uh, later version of charnakya Yeah, yeah, you know, actually, that writer who wrote Chanakya, he might have made it up. You no, know, because there's another play. You know, because uh, Mudra Rakshas is what the play was about. Is Chanakya? That author wrote another play, which is <clears throat> called uh, Ram Gupta or something, and in which the the Gupta king. is defeated by the shakhas of gujarat and the shakhas say you have to send us somebody you know uh you send your wife so normally what people did they would send one maid or somebody and nobody knows because everybody was in parda but he sent his wife so she was very angry and her devar went with her 
to the Gujarat capital. And then he, he did one survey and he came back with an army and he defeated that fellow and he took his sister-in-law and she took her back to his brother. She said, I don't want to go back to him. You marry me now. So the brothers had a fought and he killed his brother and he became Chandragupta. That's the story. But that play is not there complete, it's impoverished, you know. So the same fellow wrote this Mudra Raksha. Uh -huh. This might be made up. And everything about Chadakya is, is based on that play. You know. So that's the thing. Yeah. Uh you know, you, you started your career with the literary adaptation of Chiptai's uh, short story, as you mentioned. And with the, uh, mo, mo, all, uh, you know, some of your films were uh, literary adaptations. So have you ever visited, revisited them to see if the screenplay communicated those sentiments, uh, the literary sentiments? And how much is your voice when you are uh, you know, adapting a literary piece. Well, recently I when this Rajka Satman Koda, just before that I, I couldn't get the film. So I read the novel before and I realized how much I changed the novel, you know. But uh, Bharti ji, Chan Saab said, Aap script dekh li jai. He said, Nei, mujhe nahi dekhna. Aap bana rahe film, mujhe thiki lage ka. You know. So he didn't mind the changes being made and so on. So it was okay. And, and and other other films, if you see, well, you know, Murao Jan, the author is not there anymore, and it's a classic, so you can reinterpret it any way you like, you know. And uh, of course, uh, Shatran Chikiladi was made on a short story, but he the difference in the story of Premchand and Satyajit Ray's uh, approach is totally different. Because Premchand was being a Marxist, he was very anti the feudal. So he showed them as completely degenerate, you know. But Ray had a more humorous, affectionate look at all the characters in the film, you know. So he didn't see them as being degenerate and, you know, so on. He saw them in a more human way, which Premchand was not able to do. And of course, there was the other track he had of Vajid Ali Shah which was his own addition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now not now moving ahead from from that and coming to the OTT because nowadays it's the OTT that is ruling our, our screens uh, somewhat. But having worked across multiple platforms for content creation and now with the boom of OTT and web series culture, how do you evaluate its impact on the viewership trends and cinema viewing cultures in terms of the content that is now. See, I, I haven't done anything for OTT, but uh, from friends who are connected with it, they said now they have also become very commercial. So they're not willing to go in for any kind of experimentation, even on OTT channels. Earlier, they were willing to accept some sort of experimentation, but not anymore. Ultimately, it runs down to how much profit you can make or something. So it is limiting their uh, kind of exposure in some yeah. sense. Uh, okay, so, so uh, you know, sometimes while watching a movie as an audience, you feel that the world of these characters is say South India, South of India, or in the USA, somewhere in the USA. Uh, but the people are still talking in Hindi and you know and Urdu uh, in cinema. Interestingly, in Trikal, um, when the film goes back into this flashback scene, uh, the characters talk in Portuguese uh, with the Nasir Sahab giving the narration, and he says. Abhi aap kitna der tak, uh, translation sunenge, and why don't our, so so you know uh, fir wo hindi mein aa hai, he changes its uh, the, the language to hindi why don't our characters speak a language which you can understand too uh, wo kehte hai. so as a writer how do you overcome this conflict of language not being part of that world that is shown well for instance in this mujib film mujib talks to the pakistanis in urdu 
He makes his speeches in parliament, in the Pakistani parliament, in English. He gives interviews in English. He talks in uh, Bengali otherwise. And two types of Bengali, high Bengali and his regional Bengali. So he talks all sorts of languages. Because all these films will be shown, as you said, on OTT and they will be subtitled. So you can see the whole film. So I think the, the switching from one language to another, which most of us do all the time, that has become quite normal now. But but if we think, uh, if we go back in time when this uh, privilege of subtitling was not there uh, that much, was it a difficulty to uh, navigate through these languages? I suppose so, but we, but Shyam Saab was very particular about dialect, you know, like in his first film, he made everybody speak in Dakini, and he's made three or four films with Dakini as a, as a base, you know, because he's from that part. And everybody earlier used to think that dialect is only meant for comedy. If you speak Dakani, it's meant for comedy, you know, like Mahmood used to speak. But now it, it, you can do serious stuff in, in dialect. So. Yeah, and I think his, uh, his uh, not that old film, uh, you know, uh, was, uh, I don't remember the name, but it was about that... Uh, person from Hyderabad trying to get a well in his uh, farm. Uh -huh. so that I think also was in the, 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 the yeah. dialect. So now I'll, I'll take you back to the beginning of the conversation where we talked about uh, when you mentioned Garam Hawa and the politics that didn't suit uh, say Nurul Hassan. He said, you know, film is good, but the siyasat is a little bit and then you you kind of approached Kafi Sahab to uski bhai aap uski siyasa thik kare thoda. So every artist has its own political view. And pichle kuch conversations mein humne ye sawal bhi poocha ki could art be apolitical? But I think no, uh, as Girish Kasarwali said that no human creation could be apolitical. Uh, so every artist has its own has its own or her own political view, and it reflects in their art form. So while working with different artists, because you also co-wrote many scripts, you also worked with many people. Do you have these arguments on their political viewpoints or there's this conflict of politics while working on a script anytime, any, on any project? Well, uh, my politics consists on because a lot of people uh, uh, have a funny attitude towards women. So I'm, I try and overcome, that is also political, no? So that is a thing. Like you meet somebody and you said, Aap kya karti hai? Ye main to bas housewife hoon. Main ka bas ka matlab kya hota hai? Hai na, aap boli hai? Main housewife hoon. It's, a, it's, a, it's also a career. You don't say it like that, you know? But if she was not a housewife, that house wouldn't run, no? Some people do both things, but everybody doesn't have to. Yeah, now, now we are on the final segment of the conversation. So we talked about your, your beginnings, your early films, your journey as a screenwriter, as a costume designer, art director. But now the general questions uh, <laughs> that we ask all our uh, participants and that I think is the most interesting part because all these questions are cliched questions and we know what the answer is, but still we ask this question just to get, uh, you know, good real material for our social media. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the first question that I would ask you <coughs> and I've asked other filmmakers also is that, do you think art can be apolitical? And I always give this example of Jean-Luc Godard who said that you know, the angle at which you set your camera is itself a political decision. What's your, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, he's right. You know, I mean, even what you eat is political, absolutely. You know, in fact, these three lions that have come on the Ashok uh, stump, 
And I think that they have eaten too much and they are vomiting. You can see it like that. Some people see them as menacing. I think that they are disproportionate and they look like they are regurgitating their food. That is one way of looking at it. And you say that's political. You know. But Anupam Kher said, yes, we will bite, we will shout, we will do this. So everybody has their own take on a simple thing like that. And uh, the second question is because when we talk of cinema and when we discuss film, we kind of think in binaries of good cinema, bad cinema, commercial cinema and art cinema. So I think it was Adun Gopalakrishnan who said that, you know, uh, films which are commercially hit are considered commercial film and that flop on the screen are termed as art cinema. It's that simple. So how do you see this difference of commercial cinema and art or parallel cinema? Well, I think the difference between uh, parallel and commercial cinema in Malayalam is very narrow. So he can talk like that. But in our, <clears throat> in, in, any big industry like Hollywood, they have two types of films, you know. So there, I, I see it as two types of films. One is, I mean, I would consider Bansali's films as art cinema, although he makes commercial films, because he makes a very personal vision film. But he is not making films only because he's going to make a lot of money. So films that are made with the objective of making a lot of money, those are commercial films. And those films which are made because you want to say something, those are art films. I think that's the difference. For me, that's the difference. But that, that's there in literature also. That's there in music also. That's in painting also. In every art form, you know, except that art painters earn more than commercial painters. That's the only field in which the art, art, high art painters earn more money than those who do illustrations and which are considered commercial. Because it's, it's a one-off thing, you know? one person buys your artwork. But music, everybody listens to music, everybody looks at dance, everybody looks at, reads books, everybody looks at films. So that's the problem. And do you think that there's certain kind of elitism attached to art cinema? Because, uh, you know, there was a time when these, when there was no OTT, nowhere to go, these art cinema were showed in uh, film festivals. And, you know, th that space is itself, you know, it's a very niche audience that watches art cinema, even today. So do you think this elitism kind of affected uh, the effectiveness of art cinema in some senses? You heard of that place called Hegadu? Yeah. So a friend of mine went there and uh, he was going in a bullock cart. And uh, he said, Aap kya karte He said, I work in the film. You watch the film? He said, yes, we watch the film. He said, which film have you seen in the He said, it's Kurosawa that we have seen film. So, गांव में आप लोगों को अगर कुरोसावा की फिल्म में दिखाएंगे, so they get to appreciate, so they have their own theatre company now in that village, so on, you know. So it's not that it's an elitist. आप देखने की opportunity नहीं है, आप समझाने की opportunity नहीं है, you know. And do you think that that's where NFDC failed as an organization to support? Uh, independent uh, filmmaking and art? No, but their, their main problem is they only make films. They don't look at any other aspect of filmmaking, you know. Whereas even you, know, if you spend X amount of money on a film, at least half that amount has again to be spent on promoting that film. They don't do that. So the, I think that's a problem with them. So the creation of this narrative could be that because uh, our cinema didn't get that much screening as commercial films had. So, you know... Now, you talk commercial film, you talk about Hindi. In Hindi, there are so serious novels in Hindi. How many of them are in Hindi? Absolutely. And how many of them are in Malayalam? Hmm. I mean, people can only earn money from books. 
अभी मेरे पति जो थे उन्होंने एक सीरियल बनाया था एक बहुत मशहूर नॉवेल है वहां का कैर कैर मतलब कॉयर तो सर मैं जब गया वहां तो रेखी के लिए तो कुली मेरे अपने सर पे मेरा बक्स ले रहा था और मुझे देख के कहा एम एस सत्यु हाउ डू यू नो सर मैंने पेपर में आपका इंटरव्यू पढ़ा है आप कैर पे सीरियल बना रहे हो ना सर हाँ सर अच्छा नॉवल है पढ़ा है मैंने ये कानपुर में हो सकता है तो दैट्स द डिफरेंस तो उसको पढ़ने की अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली कैसे मिली उनके यहाँ माहौल बनाया आपके यहाँ माहौल नहीं बन पाया तो आप इधर उधर लोगों पे आप इल्जाम लगा रहे हैं आई <laughs> थिंक uh, uh, ये जो सूरत है से बदलना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट uh, है क्योंकि जिस तरफ हमारी सोसाइटी जा रही है आई थिंक फिल्म वुड प्ले अ क्रूशियल रोल आई दर पॉजिटिव और नेगेटिव दैट वुड डिपेंड ऑन स्टेट पैटर्न इज दैट वुड इट माइट गेट और नहीं बिकॉज टूडे द डिफरेंस बिटवीन बिग सिटी एंड स्मॉल सिटी इन एस्पिरेशन इज इज मच लेस देन इट वॉज से फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो and the aspiration from a village and a small town is also much less so the so time will come that the lifestyle of a village and bombay there will be not that much different we hope it happens in other countries it can happen here also you know so but when the, the class divide is so much it's not just a money class divide it's a it's a attitude class divide you know maybe somebody in a village might be earning the same kind of money that somebody in a small town earns but his lifestyle is in another century so that's the thing yeah uh, moving on you you grew up in a left uh, influenced environment and uh, left also was some a political uh, tangent that promoted cultural uh, activities these nukkar nataks and uh, drama and reading books literature so much what do you think because uh, now the left is kind of non existent i grew up in a very feudal background by the way this is a mistake my father was totally feudal <laughs> you know but then he decided at one point in time he wanted to make a car mm. and he and his friend they went to germany and uh, england and they decided they did a tie up with austin mm. and they came back to india and they went to the bank and they said aap give to give us a loan he said i'll give you a loan your project is very good but come with me so he went down to the basement he said ye 50 locker hain बिरला इन हर लॉकर में पैसे डालता है ये पचास एम हैं आपके पास पचास एम पीज है अशोक लेलैंड एंड देन हिज पार्टनर डाइट सो दे सोल्ड द कंपनी बट दे कुड नॉट मेक अ कार बिकॉज मिस्टर बिरला डेंट अलाउ यू टू मेक अ कार आई डोंट नो के आर्ट में भी ऐसे ही कुछ अगर बच बैठे हुए हैं पता नहीं हो सकता है and how do you see this fall of the left in india i have very, i think the left at, at least in up was all feudal people pretending to be leftists you know because once i asked a famous urdu poet very much leftist party member no maine kaha ki urdu mein working class ka shayar kyu nahi hai nahi hai मैंने कहा अंग्रेज में तो बहुत से हैं तो बड़े बड़े राइटर वर्किंग क्लास से आए हुए डेलन टॉमस ये वो सब वहीं से आए हुए जेम्स जॉइस वी हैड नो आंसर यू नो एक तो मे बी बिकॉज आपका कास्ट सिस्टम है और आफ्टर ऑल प्रेमचंद भी तो कायस्थी थे ना हालांकि बहुत गरीब बैकग्राउंड के थे वो फिर भी वर्किंग क्लास के तो नहीं थे ना वो मिडिल क्लास के थे अलग बहुत कोशिश की उन्होंने जो वंचित है उनके बारे में लिखा जाए ट्राइड 
I don't know. That. I think there's a there's this glass wall and glass ceiling which we don't want to look at. Maybe. So I think the left movement was no was a notional movement. It was not a real left movement. It did not involve the actual working class. They were only interested in the organized working class who worked in factories. What about all the others? They were not organized. And do you also feel that there's some kind of romanticism attached to the left? Correct. Correct. All extreme, all these movements which uh, have an attitude, I think even after your latest pay foiled in the Stanway in Dutva. That is also romanticism of a, of a warped sort, but it is romanticism. Now you can say that our Hawaii was a war and we were very poor. What is it going to be used to you? The classics are not going to teach the kids. Once I went to school, there was a ceremony in the school. We all had to talk about theater and all that. So I told you that you have to teach the kids कितने बच्चों ने शेक्सपियर का नाटक पढ़ा है तो वो तो उनके कोर्स में था सबका हाथ बढ़ गया मैंने कहा आप में से कितने लोग जानते हैं कि कालिदास ने नाटक लिखे हैं दो हाथ के आप आप अपने क्लासिक्स बच्चों को नहीं सिखाएंगे तो क्या होगा नहीं फिर आप किस पे इल्जाम लगाओगे आप क्योंकि शायद इंदिरा गांधी ने कहा था कि यू नो दिस यंग जेनरेशन ऑफ इंडियन आर इलेटेड इन थ्री लैंग्वेजेस इंग्लिश हिंदी एंड उर्दू सो आई कम फ्रॉम दैट जेनरेशन जो इंग्लिश बोलती है दे डोंट नो Uh, either of the three languages uh, properly. Uh, to, so, um, one of my last questions to you: How do you see this role of cinema in in society? Cinema is not the art form of the twenty first century. Cinema was the art form of the twentieth century. So. The OTT is is a is a pointer to what might happen as an art form. Nineteenth century art form was a novel, but it's still continuing. So cinema will continue, but there will be a new art form. I think I'm not sure what it's like, but there will be a new art form. Yeah, and it's still I think developing. It's in the early. Yeah, I, yeah it, it it because of the digital revolution will throw up its own art form you know right now it is riding piggyback on earlier forms of art that's what i think yeah um so uh, if you can name some indian films that made an impact on you as a as a writer as a viewer over these years Well, Satyajit Ray's film, uh, some of Adur's films, not many actually. More, I'm more interested in literature than in film actually. But if you ask me to read a book or see a film, I'd rather read a book. So, if you if you have to suggest few books for uh, for us and for our audience. What books that would be books that influenced you uh, and and made an impact on your thinking? Well, the book I really liked a lot was Rag Darbari, which is one of my favorite books. <laughs> At one time, I wanted to make a film of it. Yeah. So when I I was reading it in the bus and I started laughing loudly when I was reading it in the bus, you know. <laughs> so. Mm. And uh, yeah, and I like this Nitanjali uh, Shree's new novel. I think it's really nice. Two of them, great samadhi. But I read another novel of hers, earlier one. But usme wo 
जादू की बात नहीं है इसमें है भाषा बहुत अच्छी है इसकी Do you also read poetry? Yeah, poetry, poetry, Urdu not Hindi poetry, I don't like so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, any words that you remember? No, I'm, I'm very bad at words, but my favorite poet is Faiz. Uh-huh. Faiz ki koi line hai, agar aapko yaad aati ho is but I have, I have a whole, whole shelf of Faiz. पोएट्री any any recent uh, uh, films that you watched by young filmmakers that you think you know they have they are the ray of hope for our cinema not not really so do you think there's still a hope for cinema to exist yeah yeah of course there's a lot of people who are doing new things you know now the final question the, the climax of this conversation that i always say would uh, uh, seal the fate of this interview is your experience of being on carwan cinema archive did you like the questions how is your experience if you want to say anything about carwan oh i have seen some of your other programs so they are great fun yeah so i don't know how much uh, viewership you have but anyway did did you enjoy the questions yeah they were quite good questions that 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 made our our day thank you so much shama ma'am for giving so much time to for this conversation uh, we were planning this for a long time and finally we we we, we did it and we made you smile also throughout because i was very nervous that uh, i might get shouted uh, in between but that did not happen fortunately thanks to our good questions thank you so much ma'am and i look forward to seeing